Hi friends, and welcome to Tiny Technical Tutorials, where we do bite-sized lessons for today's tech. In this video, I'm going to show you five PowerPoint hacks to make you more productive. The first hack is for when you have a bunch of pictures like this and you don't really know what to do with them, how to format them to make them look good. Maybe they're different sizes or orientations. Well, PowerPoint actually makes that pretty easy. Let me just duplicate this slide. I'll show you how. Select all of your pictures and then come up to the Picture Format tab. And right here under Picture Layout, you can choose any of these smart art layouts to automatically arrange your pictures. I'll just hover over a few of these. You'll see that it gives you a preview of what this would look like. This one has text under the pictures, text above the pictures, and just moving down here. You'll see there's lots of different options to at least get you started. And from here, you just treat it like you would any other smart art filling in the text. Easy peasy. Okay, moving on to hack number two. The second hack is for the animation painter, which lets you apply a set of animations from one object to another with just the click of a mouse. I'll duplicate this slide as well. We'll go in and try this out. I've got a timeline here of company milestones. It's pretty basic. Maybe we want to jazz it up a little bit with some animations. I'll start with this pink target here, come up to the animations tab, and let's say for this one, we want this to float in. I'll choose this animation. And then in addition to floating in, we also want to add an animation for some emphasis. So maybe we do a pulse for emphasis. And let's dial in some of the effects here. I'll open up my animation pane over here on the right. And for this one, if we come into Effect Options, the Timing tab, we'll say this starts after the previous, which was the float up animation. But maybe we want to delay this by 0.5 seconds. And we'll repeat maybe five times, let's say. Okay, that looks good. And you'll see the preview there. In addition to that, let's also add an animation to this text box here. This one we also want to float in, so I'll choose that as the entry animation. But I want this one to come down from the top of the slide, not from the bottom up. So over here under Effect Options, we'll say Float Down. Perfect. And for this one, you can either come into the Effect Options as well, like we just did, or up here on your ribbon. You can say that this starts with Previous, but we'll delay this by 0.25 seconds. Okay, let me preview that by clicking over here on the left, or you could go into slideshow mode as well. So there's the target floating up and pulsing five times, and then the text box floating down to meet it. Okay, we like the look of that, but you'll see there's four other things here on the timeline that need the same treatment. And that's where the animation painter comes in. So let's say that what we did here on the target, we want to apply this to all of the other targets, I'm calling them targets, sort of bullseye shapes here. We want to apply that to the other ones on the timeline. So I'll select that shape and come up to Animation Painter, click on that, and then click the thing you want to apply it to. You'll see the little paintbrush here. And there you go. And then we want to apply what we did here on the text box to the 2017 one down there. So I'll do the same steps, Animation Painter, click on this. Perfect. And because the way they're sequenced, I'm doing bullseye followed by the text box, then I'll do another bullseye followed by the text box. If I did all of the bullseyes at once, they'd be sequenced right after each other. But that's how you use the animation painter. If we do a quick preview, you'll see that that one's behaving just like it did before. And then the second one, same thing. That second one will probably want to update that to float in from the bottom, but you get the idea. That's the animation painter and how it works. Okay, moving on to hack three. We've got another painter here, the Format Painter. You might already be familiar with this in general, but it's more powerful than you might think. Let me close out of my animation pane over here. And say that I've got a shape like this, and this is just the default shape that I get with my master template, but I want to modify it. So let's say for Shape Fill, this should be white. For the Outline, Maybe I want to go with a little bit of a lighter blue here. And for weight, we'll go with two and a quarter. And let's say we want to make that dashed as well. 
or whatever you want to do for formatting here. Once you get that the way you like it, if you come here to the Home tab, you might already know how to just click the Format Painter and apply it to one other shape so I could apply it here. But tip is, if you click it twice, and it'll actually tell you this in the little tool tip here, double click the Format Painter, and then you can apply this to multiple shapes without having to go back up and pick the Format Painter again. That'll definitely save you time if you've got a lot of shapes that you're working with. Of course, the same is true of text as well. So let's say for this one, we want to make this Arial Black, size 24, and maybe we'll go with a dark gray instead of the black color. So once again, with that selected, double click on your Format Painter, and then go select the other text items here. Okay, moving on to hack number four. This one is all about aligning and distributing your objects on the slide. Now you might have a slide like this where things are obviously not aligned, and PowerPoint gives you some nice guides that you can use, like this here. And you can get far with those, but if you've got a lot of shapes or you just want to save some time, there's an easier way to do that. So I'll select all of the shapes here, come up to Arrange, and then Align, and let's align all of these top. Perfect, so now everything's aligned. You could align to bottom or middle as well. And then the other thing that's just a little bit off here is the distribution across the slides. You can see that the space between these shapes is not the same. That's easy to fix as well if you come up to Arrange, Align, and then Distribute Horizontally. Now keep an eye on the far left shape and the far right shape. You'll see that these don't move. It's just everything in between. So you're basically saying, I want this to start here on the left, and I want it to go over to the right, and everything in between that, I want to have equal spacing. But you'll see overall these are not centered on the screen, so we could center them like that. Or if you wanted to move the left or right shape ahead of time so that they're at the right spots on the edges of the slides, then you can do your distribution. Let's take one more look at that. This will work with pictures or icons as well, like I have here. So once again, we'll select everything. You could also do a Control A to get all of those. And we'll arrange, align. Here, let's align center. Perfect. Maybe I want to move those over a little bit. Once again, the top icon here and the bottom, those will sort of be the boundaries when we go to distribute this. So if I wanted it to come all the way down to the bottom, say here, and all the way to the top here, then I can distribute, and everything in between those will get the same amount of spacing. So we'll arrange and align vertically. Okay, the very last hack is about reducing the size of your PowerPoint file. This deck that I'm working in here is about 13.4 megabytes, which is not massive, but it's pretty big if you're going to be emailing it to somebody, for example. So let's see how we can reduce the size of this. The first is to compress your images. So if I scroll down a little bit here, I've got some slides with some nice big images. These are high resolution images, though, that are quite large and contributing to the file size. I've also got some pictures up above in the previous slides as well. So one thing you can do here, just select your image, your picture, and then come up to Picture Format, Compress Pictures. And there's a few options here. You can apply only to this picture if you deselect that, though, it'll apply these options to all the pictures in your slides, which is what I want. You can also say to delete cropped areas of pictures, so that'll actually get rid of anything that you've cropped. You might know that when you crop, it kind of leaves a preview of what used to be there, but you can just get rid of all of that to save yourself a little bit more space. So we'll leave that selected. And then your resolution here, this is where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck, most likely. We'll say that we want to go with email or 96 PPI pixels per inch. And this will minimize it for sharing over email. So we'll say OK. And then I'm going to save the file just by doing a Control S. And let's go see how much that reduced the file size. Look there, we're down to 4.7 megabytes, which is much, much better. But there's still more that you can do. Back to our list here. You can clean up your master slides. So to do that, come into View, Slide Master, and you'll see here, I've got two different slide masters that I'm working with. This one is just the blank one that comes with PowerPoint. 
not much in here in terms of visuals, pictures, graphics, anything like that. There's a second one also from just the standard PowerPoint templates. This one's got a little bit more, but really nothing huge as far as images. Chances are though, if you're working at a company or you have your own clients, they probably have master slides that have lots of pictures embedded or other things that are taking up space. What you can do is come in here and delete these slides, the layouts that you know that you aren't using. So I'll just select these and hit the delete key. If you're using something, it actually won't let you delete it. So the fact that I can delete these means that they're not actually being used in the normal slide deck. And I'll just delete some of those. That one won't delete. That means that I'm using it. This won't actually save me much size on this because again, there's no pictures here. But if you do have master slides that have lots of pictures and you know you're not gonna use them, then just delete those layouts and get rid of them. That'll save you a bunch of size. Okay, I'll close out of this. We'll save. And then the final thing to cover is compress media. So on this next slide here, I've got a video. This is my introduction video for my YouTube channel. It's not huge as far as videos go, but it is contributing to that file size. PowerPoint lets us easily compress the size of the videos as well. If you come up to File, Info, if you have media in your deck, meaning videos or audio, then you'll get this button here to compress media. If you don't have any of those things in your deck, then you won't actually see this button. But obviously we do. It's saying that the media files in this presentation are three megabytes. So we'll say compress media. You've got different options here as far as the quality. If we really wanna get the size down, we'll go with the standard 480p. Depending on how large the video is, this could take a little while, but you'll see this one's pretty fast to process. And it's saying that we saved 1.1 megabytes here. Excellent. So I'll close out of that. Back up here, do a control S to save. If we go back and look at the size of our file, you'll see now we're down to about 3.1 megabytes, which is much better and something you could email without worrying about clogging up inboxes. And there you have it, five PowerPoint hacks to make you more productive. If you found this content valuable, we always appreciate the likes, subscribes, and shares.